How does Jerry Northrup figure things out in ecotechnology? I am Andrus Kulikowskis. This is Math for Wisdom. Jerry and I are conversing. He leads our Math for Wisdom study group on language of wisdom. And that's where he and I are building bridges between our languages of wisdom. His is the relational symmetry paradigm, uh, which leads to the language Ododu that he's constructed. And you may have seen a video about that. And I have wondrous wisdom, uh, which is what uh, Math for Wisdom is uh, organized to make um, connections with uh, all, all, of, all of knowledge, all of insights. So today we're focusing on Jerry's insights into ecotechnology. He worked for six decades in the wastewater management, but always uh, with a point of view of interacting with biological systems and organisms. And I want to uh, connect with his way of thinking so my plan is to collect the ways he has figured things out and to systematize them. And uh, then we'll be able to see uh, the types of cognitive frameworks that uh, I've observed, that he's observed, we'll be able to have a sh common language. So please join us. This is the first in a series of several as we collect these examples. Maybe you have examples to share in the comments. Uh, maybe you want to join our study group, go to www.mathforwisdom.com. So could you give a couple examples, like how do you figure things out in race resource management? How have you done that? Uh, the, the, the biggest clue, I think, is, is to, uh, it's kind of like the that uh, old movie, Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. So I work with biological systems by watching them and trying to let them figure out what to do. And that you construct an environment which poses the question, the bugs or the worms or the fish or whatever it is will work out how they can function in that environment. And you look at that and then you try and help them get there. So this goes back to a, a comment my brother used to use a lot when we were doing Bion together of um, uh, how you work with people. It's let help versus make force. We'll say that again. It's let help versus make force. So if you have a job to do, instead of saying, okay, this is what you're going to do. This is where you're going to sit. This is how you're going to do it. You say, here's a problem we have to solve. Um, I think you can solve that. And how can I help you do that? So it's a different kind of approach as to how you work with people. And I kind of try and do that with um, environmental systems as well, whether they're microbial or invertebrate or vertebrate or what have you, is that you you watch, you observe the uh, organisms you want to work with and see what they want to do and then how you can design systems so that what they want to do is what you'd like to do. And, and involve that as a as a working relationship, uh, as opposed to treating it as chemical processing machines. Right. Where you build a machine and it's going to do a certain function, and that's that's what it does. You you work at it as an interactive basis. We'll we'll set up an environment. We'll see who comes and lives in it, and then we'll get a notion as to what they like to do and how we can improve the environment. Uh, so that they can do things that are more in line with what we'd like them to do. Mm -hmm. But it's an interactive sort of process. And it it goes back to this difference between maximum entropy theory and and the way thermodynamic entropy is looked at, the heat death of the universe, as opposed to if you say energy flow through a, a bounded system, but it's open, but it's bounded, it tends mm -hmm. to have an organizing effect. And then looks like negative entropy from a larger system, but it actually is a creative process mm -hmm. uh, where you maximize your uncertainty, which allows you to make the best decisions given the information you can 
you know, that that's the other kind of guiding principle here is to as to how to um, take advantage of the organizing capability of the universe when energy flow goes through a bounded system. Um, and then there's the question of whether the universe is bounded or unbounded and, and what have you. Um, thermodynamic entropy, the heat death of the universe, is derived for a bounded system. But if the universe is not bounded, if it's if it's created, then things can always flow through any kind of boundary. That gives you a whole different spin as to how it works. And so, so this is th this is very um, helpful. Like you know, just in a short span here, like it helps me enter into your mind. You know, so all of a sudden I can yeah. see like why you care about the maximum entropy principle because uh, it's saying basically what you said. You know that uh, where do things want to go? You know, let them just right. let them just let them let them understand yeah, what they're going to go. Let them determine then... the answers. Uh, I'll give you an example. This is an example mm -hmm. that my wife really likes. Is that uh, back in the 1970s uh, when Lynn was working at Fisher Price and I was just basically mm -hmm. writing, so she was supporting me at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but we lived out in the country in Wyoming County, and we had this little house, which was. Uh, it was kind of perched on a bank. So we had a, a back porch that was screened in and you could look down at the woods and the a creek and stuff like that. But it was, an, it was an old house, so it wasn't in great shape, but uh, the porch was screened in. And a colony of bees came in and, and set up residence in the, in the, uh, in the wall of the, of the porch. And that was great. We thought that was terrific. But then the bees found a way to get into the porch and because it was mm. screened in that they couldn't get a way out. And so I looked at that for a while and I eventually decided that in the upper left-hand corner of the northeast side, they would tend to congregate up there and they couldn't find a way to get out. So I actually went in and I put a hole in the screen oh, wow. up there. And the bees found the hole and those, so they would get out. And okay. so when they would get into the constrained space, I didn't have to worry about them because sooner or later they would get up there and they would get out. And so instead of getting a whole swarm of bees inside the screened in porch, we'd have a few of them that would, would fly around, but they'd always find the right place to get out. Hmm. So what was a problem that you would normally have, you, right. you could solve it very easily by doing the opposite of what the screen is, which is to keep bugs out. But you also want, when bugs get in, you want a, a path for them to get out so they don't bother us, we don't bother them. Right. That's a very nice example. Yeah. yeah. So what I'd like for us to do is to try to collect, you know, but of course, but any, if you could collect like 50 examples from you, yeah, see, then we could map out the whole thing. Like, you know, so that's a, that's a lot of work, but I think you can see the benefit of it. And then also... um. Once you get like, you know, 10, let's say you get 10 examples, maybe uh, other people can, you know, we'll invite other people to say, well, what, and I like, uh, we'll, we'll use the term that you have here, eco-technology, right? Because that yeah. seems to say that technology and ecology can actually um, fit together very yeah. nicely. That's the point yeah. of the word, right? Like it. Right. That's, that's a new, new concept for technology instead of a machine. Right. It's how you work with a natural system as a part of it, treat it as an equal. So it's that make force. We don't, we're not going to try and tell it what to do, which is what chemistry tends to do. Um, you have a fixed reaction and you try and force it to do certain things, but you work with what nature can do, would like to do, mm -hmm. is compatible with what it does. So that's that whole notion of sustainability, of and, and, and cooperative and, and, coexistence. And, and you know, when I first heard you say that word, it just felt very foreign to me, like, you know, very much like a mongrel type, I mean, like just, <laughs> not a, but, but see, when you understand, when I understand more like what it's about, it very much is about the am ambiguousness of eco technology, like, you know, it's ecology and technology kind of like working technology working as if it was ecology and vice versa they just kind of like fit together nicely so if we could work this out then all of a sudden ecological intelligence i think will happen very naturally yeah based on mastering your um you know your perspective 
Yeah, let me give you just another quick example. Yeah. We have an oldish house mm -hmm. and you know we get these uh, every once in a while there'd be certain years where you get grass flies. They're mm -hmm. they're a house fly, but they come out of the grass and they're they're not after you know spoiled meat or, or garbage or stuff like that, but they're they get into the house and then they mm -hmm. go close to the windows and they become really annoying because you could get a lot of them in the house mm -hmm. and we can't really keep them out. So we had a, a year where we were getting a lot of those. So what we did is we set up a little terrarium and we put a frog in it. And oh. then catching the flies to feed the frog became a, a great thing. My daughter, my wife, we all, mm. all did it. But it takes a problem that you would normally say, well, we're going to spray to kill the flies. Instead of doing that, we say, well, we'll catch the flies and feed them to the frog because that's an entertaining thing. We'd like to do that. And it's a it's a biological solution. So instead of a problem, we turned it into an amusement. Right. That's a beautiful and that's yeah. very beautiful. And so yeah, those are the kind of ways as to how you try and, and uh, build um, a waste management system, an, an eco technology system, a resource re reuse. Instead of saying, "Well, here's here's material. This is a problem." We say, "No, this is a resource." There are things that will like to eat this. And, and we could use that to our advantage and to their advantage. Okay, so this is one uh, way is to uh, kind of take the fruit of your mind uh, in your life experience. Um, and then other people will be able to relate. And then we'll, this will give us a new vocabulary, basically, a shared vocabulary. Right. And then we'll be able to say, okay, how does Odo do fit together with this? How does Wondrous Wisdom yeah. fit together with that? You see, so this will develop a new. Thank you for watching this video. Please uh, go to mathforwisdom.com or simply read the description to this video to learn how you can join our Math for Wisdom discussion group and our study groups. Thank you for liking this video, for subscribing to this YouTube channel, and for supporting Math for Wisdom through Patreon. Math for Wisdom is a fantastic online group. You should join it. And if you want to contribute, you go to Patreon, you sign up, it takes two minutes, and there it is.